Hour of the Wolf Review, air date January 2nd, 2023. Happy New Year. Top 10 of 2022. Take one. I'm Dan Persons, and this is my Hour of the Wolf Review. I haven't done a top 10 for the past few years because, frankly, in those years I didn't see enough films that cleared my bar. 2022 was different. 2022 was a freaking gold mine. So since we've got to get this down in under five minutes, here, in roughly ascending order, is my list of the top 10 films of 2022. Number 10, Strange World. I haven't seen Avatar The Way of Water yet, but this Disney CG animated film travels a suspiciously similar path, and marvelously so. It's got the weird creatures, it's got beautiful luminous scenery, it's got a fun adventure, and it's over an hour shorter. Number 9, Air Doll. Japanese director Hirokazu Koreeda takes a premise that you would presume would be a platform for a raunchy comedy, a sex doll comes to life, and instead turns it into a wry examination of the ache at the heart of human existence. Number eight, The Long Walk. We got a lot of impressive films from unusual places last year, and this Laotian film from director Matty Doe stood out for the way it combines time travel and the supernatural to look at an unsettling form of spiritual greed. Number 7, Inu O. Anime director Masaaki Yuasa is a master at mixing animation formats and here also mixes cultures in a tale of a blind musician and a grotesquely deformed dancer who join forces to invent arena rock in feudal Japan. It's a true story. Sort of. Number six, King Car. Could this Brazilian film about a charismatic sentient car who stages a fascist uprising of old cars discarded by obsolescence and environmental concerns be an allegory for a certain recent racist would-be authoritarian president? Maybe not, but it's interesting to think about. Number five, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. There were two high-profile Pinocchios in 2022, but the stop-motion one set in fascist Italy, lots of fascism last year, wins out for its rousingly original take on the tale. Number four, Hatching. This Finnish horror film is kind of like E.T. If the child protagonist was a girl living with an emotionally abusive mother and the alien was instead a human-bird hybrid, all too willing to act, on the violent impulses of the kid it's bonded to. Number three, Mad God. Stop-motion master Phil Tippett rises from the mire of CG to create this dark, disturbing, fully stop-motion animated tour of hell. Took ten years to make and was worth every second. Number two, Prey. After several unsuccessful attempts to reboot the Predator franchise, Fox Films finally nailed it by letting director Dan Trachtenberg set the film in the 18th century and use the conflict of a young Comanche warrior squaring off against an alien invader to serve as a metaphor for the real invasion Native Americans were facing at the time. And number one, no. Every review I've read and every person I've talked to about this tale of a brother and sister confronting what may or may not be a UAP invading their horse ranch has a different interpretation. That's a tribute to director Jordan Peele's proficiency with walking the fine line of comedy and horror. Maybe too soon to proclaim this his masterpiece, but it comes close. And hey, no superhero films. How about that? Thank you for listening. If you want to write me, send that email to hotwolfreviews at upstartcompany.com. And remember, if you love science fiction, fantasy, enchantment, and the imagination, listen to Jim Freund's Hour of the Wolf most every Monday at 9 p.m. ET on WBAI 99.5 FM in New York and streaming on WBAI.org or through TuneIn. The Hour of the Wolf Reviews is produced by me, 
Dan Persons, recorded at the studios of Upstart Company, and is an Hour of the Wolf production. Take care.